This scene proves that guys from the 13th Air Force down in the South Pacific don't spend all their time slugging it out with Tojo's boys in the wide blue yonder. And it proves you can get the man out of America, but you can't get America out of the man. 10,000 miles from home, and these fellas still finagle the day off to get in a little fishing. Of course, it's different from home where you used to row around Lake Winoga in a flat bottom at a buck an hour. This time, the boat's a salvage Jap fishing barge powered with a GI truck motor. And it's a cinch this is in Lake Winoga, a couple of miles out of town. After you've trolled a while, you put in at Goat Island, a place even the Japs didn't want, but which makes a swell spot for a picnic. One of the local inhabitants shows you some of the finer points of spear fishing. And though you're no expert, when the old gang hears about it, you'll be harpoon champion of the South Seas. Spearing crabs, like shooting fish in a barrel, you'll tell them. And eating crabs, well, by the time the day is over, you'll really be an expert at that. Royal soft shell crab, not bad. You have to admit it tastes a lot better than some of those undersized pickerel you used to reel in. If you don't like fish, the island offers you a leg of goat on the hook. Get out the M1, boys, and go to work. <laughs> yeah, that's like Americans, too. Spend the week shooting down jabs and then go goat hunting for a little excitement. Well, the goats taste better anyway. Nice change from sea rations, eh, fellas? Yes, sir. Mm. Well, the mint sauce and brown potatoes are missing, and maybe Mom would object to the table manners, but who cares? It's the day off that counts. This V-mail letter is from a young fellow in the South Pacific. He comes from the Lower East Side in New York, and I've known his family for a good many years. You see, I'm an East Side boy myself, and no matter where you live, you never move away from the East Side in spirit. Bill asks if his hometown has changed much since the war, and I thought instead of writing him, I'd show him and the rest of the men from the East Side just what's happening in the old neighborhood. Maybe some of you men who do not come from there may be interested too. There's no place quite like the east side of New York in the whole world. Practically every nationality that ever came to America is represented there. You hear a lot about democracy, but sometimes it is difficult to define. The east side is made up of every nationality and religion and is a good example of democracy at work. Whenever I visit the east side, I always stop in at the Fulton Fish Market. I used to work there as a young man. Nowadays, they're busier than ever. Folks here at home, because of meat rationing, eat a lot more fish. And the market is shorthanded, since so many of their men are now in uniform. Wherever I went on the east side, I saw service flags in almost every window. These folks, Italians, Greeks, Jews, Chinese, Russians, know what freedom means because many of them or their parents were denied it before they came to this country. They are pretty proud of those stars, each one standing for a man fighting for his country. And sometimes the star stands for a girl. As I was walking along, I saw this scene. Mr. Deutsch, once he lived in Germany, saying goodbye to his daughter. I asked him how he felt about her journey up, and he said, anything I've got, America can have, and he meant it. Down there, I found everybody contributing to the war. 
in whatever way they can, even the kids. After school, instead of filling the playgrounds, the children go around the neighborhood collecting scrap, which will be turned into bullets and guns. Most of the folks on the east side haven't much to give, but whatever they have, they give gladly. At Seward Park High School, over on Essex Street, the boys near draft age are spending extra time concentrating on some skill, such as radio, which the Army and Navy needs. Seniors practice on an obstacle course, preparing for the day when they put on olive draft or navy blue. There's no part of life in this small town in Manhattan which hasn't been touched by the war. Every day on Grand Street, you can see the girls pricing wedding dresses, dreaming of the time when you fellows will be coming home to them. At settlement houses like the Educational Alliance, the older people give too. Here every day, mothers and grandmothers and one grandfather make hospital gowns and kits. I'm 74 years old. I do what I can. I have three sons overseas. One is in Africa and one in Europe and one in West South uh, Pacific. And I'm a very proud mother. Down on Monroe Street, I visited a Red Cross unit where mothers roll bandages for their sons overseas. And all day long, there is a line of women waiting to give their blood, which will be used as plasma. Mrs. Morano, Mrs. Weisenstein, Mrs. Scorus, Mrs. Kelly. They'd give a pint a day if it were asked of them. In every house of worship on the east side, prayers are said daily by these Protestants, Jews and Catholics, for their sons and husbands, who are fighting to preserve the freedom, peace, opportunity and happiness they found in America. A few months back, the Army-Navy screen magazine went to a graduation exercise of fighting Frenchmen from a U.S. flying school in Florida. In those days, as they were waiting a little proudly for their wings, Russia had just started to hammer Kiev, and we were just starting to mop up Sicily and the Solomons. And in those days, guys like Henri Chevenet here, orphans from a captive mother country, were hot under the collar to see action. They were itching to quit training in America and get into the fight here in England, a few short miles from home across the channel. The tricolor of the French Republic graces many a British airstrip these days, and that means that from those airstrips every day, the Cross of Lorraine of fighting France thunders off into the east with Henri Chevenet or René Monteur or Jean Valcour at the stick or radio or guns of the American-made Boston. They're guides from France, going home. Into France, into home, past French fields sprinkled with blue cornflowers, past the green apple trees, Things men remember is hope.
down the cobblestone highways of the orchard country, over the old timbered houses of French towns they remember, where the Gestapo now has an office in the city hall. On to the target. French targets visited last week by Frenchmen and the week before by Frenchmen. Suppose you were sitting in a foreign plane over Pittsburgh or Detroit or San Francisco watching the bomb bays open and watching the hell and havoc of those bombs creeping through your country, a country you wanted to go home to. You'd have to have some pretty strong convictions and value something pretty highly. France itself? No, it's the spirit of liberty for French people that's up here in this plane fighting. And it's down there, too. It's down there strong, fighting underground, welcoming that. And that. 150 years of liberty, equality, fraternity were flying with that Allied plane. A few fighting Frenchmen died in it because they had a hankering to keep that spirit dominant in the world. So long, Frenchmen. Go on back to Get some more of our gas and come back home again to fight. Maybe sooner than you think you can come home and stay. sir. training in the care and use of the gas mask? Move and replace mask, gas. 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 Ready? Exercise. Hot, hop, hip, hop, 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 hot, on the stomach. I'll surround him. Now you go that way. And uh, you go that way. And you? Oh, that's me. I'll go this way. This is the life. 
laying out here in the sunshine with a chirping of the blue birds, the hum of the bees, and the smell of new moon hay, and apple blossoms, and fly paper. <laughs> fly paper? No mask. I didn't know you cared. <laughs> <laughs>